Hi everybody, welcome back to Ethan's Laboratory. Today, uh oh, to... Mamma mia! It's so dark. Like this. It's not bright enough. Yeah, in the case of a blackout, we use candles. But it seems like our candle isn't too bright enough to light up our entire laboratory. So, let's make it a lot more exciting and a lot more brighter, and in the chemistry way. For this experiment, we'll be using a metal called magnesium. Why magnesium? Well, that's because it's actually reactive enough to react with oxygen in the air, but not way too reactive that actually just burns away with oxygen in the air. So, well, it, so because it's so reactive, it reaches 3,000 degrees Celsius, similar to the surface of a red dwarf star. And because of all that heat, it also creates a lot of light. So that's why we need protective glasses. But, if, but after our safety, let's see how bright it is after we light it. So first of all, we need to get our protective goggles on. So this is a strip of magnesium, which we'll use it to burn. And this, in the aluminum cup, is hexamethylene tetraamine. It has a flash point of 250 degrees Celsius, or the minimum temperature required to burn. And it automatically ignites at 410 degrees Celsius. So let's ignite it. Did you see that bright white light? Brighter than a candle. It was way brighter than this little candle, right? This is how chemistry can use can be used to light up our house. Now to the explanation of why magnesium burned. Okay, let's see why the magnesium burned. Now most of the metals you're familiar with, which is like iron, tin, or copper. We're actually like at the end of the reactivity series. In other words, it's not much, re not so reactive. But magnesium is closer to the reactive side of the reactivity series, and therefore more reactive than most metals are familiar with. Magnesium is right here on the reactivity series. It's reactive enough so it can burn, and not too reactive that it just burns away. So. For example, gold and platinum barely react with acids. Uh, copper and silver, for example, will tarnish over time. Tarnishing actually happened to the Statue of Liberty a long time ago. Furthermore, iron would slowly react and form rust, as you all know. Aluminum quickly forms an oxide layer. And Magnesium can burn, as you saw it, while sodium and potassium undergo more violent reactions where it can react with just tiny amounts of water. It violently reacts, forming a yellow flame. That's because it's a lack of flame color for sodium. While potassium would not only create a purple flame, but it would also end up melting. Also, at the end, I have a metal called cesium. It's so reactive that the instant that it touches STP or standard temperature and pressure air, it will immediately start reacting, causing violent fires and explosions. We don't want that in our experiment kits, right? Of course, we don't want to blow up our laboratory. 
as it's funny. So magnesium has enough reactivity that it doesn't blow up like cesium, potassium, or whatever, but also not too less reactive that it cannot burn and quickly from an oxide to hide itself in like say aluminum or iron. Magnesium the metal has two valence electrons. And because it has only two valence electrons to spend, it's rather reactive or towards the very reactive part of the reactivity series. So in intense heat, it would give away its two electrons to oxygen, which is the thing that oxidizes the magnesium and is the thing that oxidizes anything we burn. So the electrons move here and become magnesium oxide. So they become magnesium 2 plus ions and oxide anions in a lattice structure. But because this process requires a requires and emits a lot of heat, it, the heat it is so high that it reaches 3,000 degrees, oh wait, that's 300, 3,000 degrees Celsius, which is similar to the surface temperature of a red dwarf star. In other words, extremely hot. Now, if you paid extremely close attention to the magnesium after the combustion, it will went down a little or curved down. That's because of the extreme heat. 3000 degrees Celsius ain't no ordinary heat. That's because 3000 degrees is high enough to melt both magnesium oxide, which melts at 2800 degrees, and just plain old magnesium, which melts at 650 degrees. So both the magnesium, which did not react for some reason, and the magnesium oxide at the surface would both melted and therefore just went down a little. But why all that magnesium burned, it produced a white flame instead of the red orange flame you're used to. That's just magnesium's black flame color. If you go over to the uh, fireworks video, you'll see why this happens, but let's review that. Magnesium has its two electrons in the 3s orbital. But because of the intense heat, the electrons get more energized and therefore hop on to the more energized electrons orbitals or the 3p orbital. But at this orbital, it isn't as comfortable as the 3s orbital. So therefore, it's going to give away all of its energy as light energy and magnesium emits a white light. And then, because it lost all of its energy, it's going to go back to 3s orbital, which is its rightful home. And thanks for watching the magnesium burning video. Well, see you next time at Ethan's Laboratory. And bye.